Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and today's lesson is the fifth in my series where I demonstrate how to apply form controls to an Excel worksheet. Today I'm going to show you how to use the combo box. We're going to use the combo box control to be able to create a drop-down list of the products that we have in stock. We want to include these products on our invoice. So first off, notice over here that for the description where we're going to use our combo box that I've applied the merge and center. So I've made wider space available for the description. All right, we're ready to place our first combo box. For form controls, we go to the developer tab on the ribbon. In the controls group from the drop down on the insert command, we want to choose the combo box. Now, notice that there are two other combo boxes listed here, but they're grayed out. This is the combo box that we're going to use. So we click and then we draw it in the cell. So we have a little black cursor. When we want to align it to a cell, hold down Alt as you place it. So it makes it easier to place it. So there is our drop down, but it is only a drawing until we actually format the control. So let's right mouse click on the control and we want to choose format the control. The input range is the list of products over here. Now I've created a name range over here called product. So it'll be easy for us to use the input range. We'll just call it product and it will pick up that name range. Now the key to understanding any of the form controls is the cell link. So that when we make a selection from our combo box, where will it actually link to? So let's come over here into our grouping. What we want to do is we want to choose this first row in our grouping over here for the cell link for our first product. Now also notice that with combo boxes, the default drop-down listing will be eight titles. Let's change this. Let's make this six. And if we wish, we can apply 3D shading to it. All right, now let's check this out. So now when we look at our combo box, we have six titles selected. If I choose cantaloupe, notice when I come over here into the table, the cell link is three. Well, why is it three? I chose cantaloupes, and over here in our listing, cantaloupes is the third row in our listing. So that's the key to understanding how the cell link works. All right, now let's make a copy of this. So let's right mouse click and we'll say copy, and let's paste it two more times. So we'll choose paste for our second line on our invoice, and we'll choose paste for our third line on the invoice. Now, notice that, of course, each one of these is showing cantaloupe. So what we have to do is we need to come over here and change the cell link for the second and the third lines on our invoice. So we'll right mouse click, format the control, and what must be changed for the second line, second combo box on our invoice is the second row over here in our grouping. Again, we'll leave the settings with six uh, titles to show 3D shading, and we'll do the same over here for our third. We'll right mouse click our third combo box, format the control, and what needs to be changed is the cell link. So now we'll make the change over here, and now let's test these out. So if we change the first line to dates, notice that the cell link changes the four. Dates are the fourth item listed, the fourth row. That's going to be important because we're going to want to be able to look up the unit price for our selection. So for our second line, again, let's test this out. Let's make it eggplant. And notice that the cell link that's returned is five because eggplants are in the fifth row in our listing. And finally, let's change our first one. Let's come up here and make this apples. So with our combo box now, in our third line, apples is the first line or the first row in our listing. Now, having the combo list, of course, is great. It assures accuracy. It makes it easy for us to have a, the correct description in there. But we also want to be able to look up the unit price for our selection. For this, we want to use the index function. Now, before we use the index function, let's give a name to our grouping over here. So what we want to do is choose this entire product grouping, and let's give it a name. Let's call this list, and then make sure we hit Enter. All right, now we're ready to look up the unit price. We use the index function. 
equals index. And notice that with the index that there are two possibilities. We want to choose the first one. The array that we want to index is going to be that name range. We just gave it the name of list. So the list is what we want to index. That's our first argument. Our second argument is the row number. The row number is going to be the cell link. So we choose the cell link. Remember, we're formatting or we're looking up our first uh, product listing from the combo box. So what we want to list for the row is the cell link. Our third argument, notice, is an um, optional argument. It's included in the bracket. For the column, remember that we're looking up the unit price. So the unit price is in the second column. So we'll put in two and then a right parentheses. And now there is our price for the dates. So if we come over here and verify our price for the dates is $20. Let's check it out. If we were to change this and make it eggplant, eggplant over here is now the fifth in the row and the price is $25. So it's because we use the name range for our array. This is our list that we're looking up. It created an absolute reference. So creating names creates an absolute reference. This makes it very easy for us to just copy this down. So now when we copy this down, if I change this over here to figs in the third combo list, that's going to look for the sixth row in this array. And in the sixth row, one, two, three, four, five, six is figs, and there's the price, $30. Now, of course, it's a simple matter to just add in some quantities. And now let's finish this off with our amount. So we'll take the quantity and we'll multiply that by the unit price. And now we'll copy that down. And there, we've created an invoice with our combo box. Remember, with the combo box, it's important that you format it. The key element when you format any of the forms is the cell link. Which cell do you want to refer to when you make the choice from the combo box? So over here, we created a name range. And our first combo box is going to link over here to the first row in our selection. Then we use the index function to be able to look up the list price. So our index was looking in this name range for the array, which we called list. The key element was what were we looking up for the row. The row was the row number, the row index for the product that's been selected. And then we looked up the unit price, which is in column two. So there you've learned how to create an invoice using a combo box. It's part of the form controls in Excel. And this is typical of the tips that I offer in my 50 best tips video series. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.